So when we're injecting the cervical and thoracic spine, we wish to have the patient positioned with a pillow lengthwise down the body. This ends, elevates the ribs, allows the head to be flexed in a uh, position that eliminates much of the cervical lordosis and gives us easier access to the spinous processes in the cervical area. So again, we want the pillow lengthwise down the body as we have it here, not crosswise so the patient can be relaxed. When we get down into the thoracic area, we can have the arms at the sides like this, or we can drop the arms off. We want to identify the midline, what we call the no man's triangle, the area in the middle where there's obviously space and uh, we don't wish to put a needle in this area. Oftentimes, I'll keep my finger in this area to keep my needle out of the area. We <clears throat> then want to identify the uh, nuchal ridge where the skull turns and the attachments of the trapezius muscle are, lie along this area. We can mark this. And he has a rather indistinct nuchal ridge coming down along the side right to the mastoid, the mastoid being here. We then want to identify our spinous processes and we drop down from that midline no man's triangle down into the area of the spinous processes trying to feel the first spinous processes that's prominent and that's C2. And it feels to me like it's right there although on this patient I have some difficulty feeling that. Many times we can identify C2 and then the spinous processes below that we have difficulty with. Now I can prominently feel a spinous, processes right, a spinous process right here and on down here. And we come on down until we feel the prominent uh, spinous process of uh, C7. And in this... Uh, We take our syringe with our chosen uh, solution. Again, we keep our finger in the, the, uh, below the ineon in the no man's land in the middle. And we find that nuchal ridge again, keeping our finger on the skin, palpating the anatomy. I can feel the curve of his nuchal ridge right in that spot. So then I come with my needle at about a, a 30 to 45 degree angle so that I'm perpendicular to the bone. All injections should be perpendicular to the bone. I keep my finger on the nuchal ridge so that I know where I'm at with my injection and then I enter with the needle and directly down onto the bone. In this area this is a very shallow injection. The injection should not be in a caudal direction but should be in a cranial direction again about 45. We remember that in our patient we have our finger in the uh, just below the ineon in that no man's triangle so that we don't stick our needle down in this area. And then now we're coming along the nuchal ridge, the attachments of the trapezius, working our way down to near the mastoid process. Our next line into the capitus muscles, splenius muscles, coming along with a second line along that nuchal ridge. We then of course have identified our spinous processes and we know that C2 is the first prominent spinous process that we should feel. And we can see that there are a lot of attachments to C2 so that it may in with again a little bit of medial orientation 20 or 30 degrees off of the midline. This is perpendicular. This is about 30 degrees in toward the midline. We just walk down then with multiple injections, usually four or five injections down in a row down this area. In with again a little bit of medial orientation 20 or 30 degrees off of the midline. This is perpendicular. This is about 30 degrees in toward the midline. We just walk down then with multiple injections, usually four or five injections, down in a row down.